Sorry for the interruption. The the um, network is a little spotty sometimes. So the solution will emerge from the bottom up and from the center, from the heart out. It's not going to be something that will be step one, step two, step three, step four. It just doesn't work like that here. There's too much hurt on all sides. There's too much history. Um, and it is going to be necessary to acknowledge all the history and realize we can't fix it all. I remember when I was a kid, my father was a businessman, and he said, look, there's only two kinds of successful deals. He said, the first kind is you make a deal and everybody's happy. The second kind is you make a deal and both sides are not happy. He said, but if you make a deal and one side's happy and one side's not happy, that's not going to last. So. I can't imagine the first one working here, quite frankly, but I can imagine the second one, where, where both sides will not be happy, but something will emerge from it. There is love here. We forget that sometimes, but there, is, there are loving human beings here on all sides of the issue, and we as peacemakers need to count on that love being a force much greater than the force of separation. And we can't define that love. This is not the love of commerce where I'll love you if. This is just the fact that in the depth of human beings there is love and that love can create things that are beyond our imagination. And if we lose faith in the love that is in human beings, then any movement ceases, and we have stillness, and we have a re-emergence of fear. So I've spoken for a little bit. This is my dear friend, my brother, and my mentor, Sheikh Hassan Manasra. And I, I just speak about stuff. He lives the pain. You know, he's, he he's lives the pain. So I'm going to ask you to say whatever you wish to say. Yeah, it's uh, really, it's a very important time for us to be here in this land, the land of the prophets, the land of love, the land of light, and also, unfortunately, the land of pain, yeah. the land of conflict, the land of crash between the people. I think that it's very important to come here to say something. We came from, you know, we came from overseas to bring love and to bring some tools to connect between the people. This is our work. I think, I cannot say since we were born, maybe before that we, <laughs> we, we were born, it's came with our souls, spirits, and uh, uh, I think this is the time to tell the people, please, realize that you are the leaders. Each one of you are leader from any place, from any religion. Don't put the barriers between you. Go and know yourself. I, I don't want to say that you need to go to know your uh, neighbor or to know your uh, a friend or your uh, a, an Arab, a Christian, Jew, and oh, so <laughs> beautiful, oh, so beautiful. It's AbrahamicReunion.org. I think it's, you know, Shahabuddin, when, when I look at your eyes, I can see myself. Yeah. And I can see all of the people. When I look at the people, the people think that I need to fight. No, I look at the people to see myself there, to realize myself, to discover or to explore my essence as a human being. We love all of the people all around the world. As Abrahamic reunion, we came here to be together with all of the people and to feel them, to share with them our 
joy, our love, our pain sometimes, because, you know, all of us, he, she has their pain. But come to translate the word pain through our work to be connection. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you. I just wanted to add something that happened today. It seemed like a little something. But it's a couple of people who have been working with us for years and who really both are beings of love and desire peace. They're deeply spiritual, deeply religious people. And it was so easy to create a misunderstanding. And it was so easy for that misunderstanding to blow up into, I'm not going to talk to you. And it was so easy for the I'm not going to talk to you to, well, I really don't like you, I don't want to be along with you, and over nothing. And this comes from a deep-seated sense of fear and an accumulation of hurt. Yeah. And Ghassan said something that is so important. Besides the love and the compassion and the oneness that we see in each other, what's really lacking also are tools, mm. methodologies. And they're not standard methodologies. They have to be flexible because the situation here requires that flexibility. So the facilitators here are learning from the ones they are facilitating, yeah. not the other way around. And it does call upon decades of experience and also training of our ego mm -hmm. to get ourself out of the way right. so that we can hear and know what can be done, when to say something, when to be silent, when to look stern, when to look gentle. If there's so much that needs to be done here and so many tools that need to be learned. And if I may, it's not artificial. It comes from the depth of our hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I really, I really <coughs> honor the work that you do. 30 years mm -hmm. of facilitating between people, and it's not easy. It's not okay. easy. I, I want to say something. Thank you, Shahabuddin. It's, yeah. it's great. You know, today when we walk up in uh, uh, Bethlehem, and uh, we came to talk to the people. All of us, we are very tired. We were very tired because uh, sometimes when you are in a very full love, you can be tired. Or if you run a lot or walk a lot, you can find <laughs> yourself very tired. Our work, the work of love, can make your body sometimes a little bit tired, but your spirit and souls will be very, very, very strong and very active. When I came to talk to the people, you know, I got uh, down and I saw Chris and I saw you, saw Katie, all of the people here, you know, I look at your eyes. I, really, in the morning, I, s I look at your eyes and I say, this is great, we need this light. Yeah. We need this light because the light was, when you pass between the people, all the people began to be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> because they could talk to you, connect with you, and sometimes when you will come to, this, to some people, you don't need to talk. You need to look. And from this look, the people can see their selves and see yourselves together. You know, imagine you are sitting next to the water and you are looking at the water, right? With your beloved wife, your beloved engaged. I don't know you can be in a very, very uh, 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 beautiful time, right? Just look at the people and smile. And as you say, you say a very important thing. Learn the tools yeah. and learn how to do this. Sometimes you need the facilitator or your teacher. Sometimes you need yourself yeah. to teach you. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I wonder... If Katie or I thought, is Chris available? Yeah. He was going to mm -hmm. just give us a quick panorama and commentary on Tel Aviv. Ah. Tel, Tel Aviv, by the way, is the other Israel. There's Jerusalem, which is um, really 
very deep and, and the religion is quite um, defined. Mm -hmm. And then there's Tel Aviv, which is uh, an expression of freedom. So you want to do that? Sure. Maybe, maybe we should just look at your face for a second so that people know who's... Hi, everybody. This is Chris Miller <laughs> from Abrahamic Reunion. Yeah, I'm here in Tel Aviv. I'm the AR administrator here on this peace journey, healing the heart of the Holy Land. And I wanted to just stay, say, start by um, sharing a little vignette. Today we went to Batir Wadi, which is a small valley, a wadi, um, outside Bethlehem. It's a very beautiful valley uh, where the people all have a small plot of land they farm. And they call it the land of many paradises because each person has their very small plot of land that is their paradise. And we, we ate at a restaurant that was the joint work of their whole community. All the people there, they gave vegetables, they gave chicken, they gave rice, they, that they grew, that they raised, and supplied it to this restaurant that was the work of several college grads from Batir Wadi who wanted to set up this, this local initiative. and. It was so delicious. The tomatoes were so fresh. They were vibrant. They were incredibly delicious. Uh, everything was totally organic. And th the, one of the beautiful things about Batir Wadi was that they have their own spring. They have four springs in Batir Wadi, and they have a lot of the water from these springs. And it's really important, these springs. It was totally different than being in the rest of the arid neighborhoods and towns where there's so little water and where the water is restricted in its flow. Here we had children diving into a pool, into a spring, cooling off, people coming from all over the, the valley to fill up their jugs of water from this spring. I drank from the spring. It was delicious. I have a whole bottle of the water. I'm taking it with me. And uh, <laughs> truly, and one of the things that we saw from the rooftops of um, of Bethlehem when we were there is always there would be black jugs, black and steel jugs on the rooftop. And here you see the Tel Aviv skyline. Here's the Tel here's Tel Aviv at sunset, and you see very clean tops of the buildings, of course, because they have plenty of water. They don't have to store it on their rooftops, which is where the residents of Bethlehem often have to to store their water is in black jugs on the rooftops and they're given uh, access to running water one day out of every 14 or so according to the guy we talked to um, have to research that more deeply but uh, that they store the water and it's supposed to last them and every rooftop all the refugees we visited they all have these jugs, and the one thing that made Batir Wadi so joyful was they had their own land, and they had their water source right there, and it was a pure source. They had old ancient Roman pools where the children were uh, were swimming and splashing and doing cannonballs and jumping, and it was just really joyful. Um, and Batir Wadi also, they have a, a, a very special negotiation agreement with the army where they don't actually have a wall there. They don't have any uh, fence because they agreed that they can cross over to their traditional lands where they harvest. So they, they have a little more rights there. It was a special place to visit and um, definitely a, a, a very strong contrast to some other places we visited. We visited the Daheshi um, camp as well in Bethlehem, which was a really heavy, heavy atmosphere. You know, just people living in very cramped quarters a lot of um, a lot of graffiti everywhere and posters of the people who have passed away in remembrance um, but I want to share a little story from Al from Batir Wadi there was a woman selling something in a store and we came there after hiking the Wadi after hiking the valley and we said hello and we were looking for things and she gave us some gifts even and we bought some things and uh, we were talking with her and she said she revealed you know, I was a refugee in Jordan for 17 years and I didn't see my family. And when I came back and with tears in her eyes, she said, my own family did not recognize me. And a stranger came up to me and asked me, are you, and he said her last family name, her family's last name. 
uh, and she, her own father, brother, they didn't recognize her because she'd been 17 years in Jordan. And she's moved back now. She's, she's living there. But the, the most beautiful thing happened, which was Zainab Zizi, the daughter of Sheikh Hassan and Jesse, my wife, and some other women went and just comforted her. And they were with her. They, 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 they consoled her. And, um, eventually she was shining again and, and her sister came and she said that she's part of many peace events as well. And we started to make a connection just out of sharing her, her story and sharing this moment, which was very, really a poignant thing. Um, it felt like a, a real bridge was, was made there. And we gave her, um, some flags of our healing the heart of the Holy land that Shahabadin was flag was waving earlier and some stickers. And we, we made connections with them. We invited them to lunch at where the, the paradise is, the lunch of the paradise is. Um, she declined. I think she wanted to stay with her shop, um, but she was very touched. And um, that was just one small moment in our day, which felt like a real meeting of, of worlds and of people. And uh, um, that real sympathy was exchanged heart to heart and human to human. And that, that meant a lot. So... That's, that's what I wanted to share today. I'll turn it back to the bosses here. No, I think we've we finished. We finished. We said more than enough. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you all, really. Uh, we do deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate your prayers, your love, your support, your kindnesses. We've gotten so many comments, and um, I just can't tell you how much that means to us here. So thank you again. And uh, in, as we used to say in the 60s, keep the faith. <laughs> uh, and tomorrow we have the Families Forum. Yeah. yeah. The, Gassan, would you say just small something about what's happening tomorrow to, so that the people tomorrow, know? First of all, really, uh, we appreciate, as Shabuddin say, your prayers, your love. Uh, your giving uh, light and rays of light to us. But tomorrow we'll be happy to have you with us in Herzliya, next to uh, the place called Sid Ali. All of us in Israel, in Palestine, different places know this place. To come at four o'clock, the families from all of the faiths will come to be together, to discuss together, to study a poem together, and to eat together. And we say it's vegetarian food. If you would like to bring a plate or vegetarian uh, thing, we'll be happy to have you with us there, and we will give ourselves to you. Okay? Will the, will the children come too? Families, sure. Children, families. If you would like to bring your children, we'll be happy because we'll be next to the beach, and everything will be great there. You know what is the great the greatest thing there? The lights that we will have. You know what is the lights? It's you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you all, everybody. Bye-bye.